So the other day we reviewed a woman who was rejected by a matchmaker for saying she wants an alpha and she's an alpha. And we were trying to figure out if that's possible. So I found uh, Layla Hermosi, which is, she's married to Alex Hermosi, which is one of those like hustle bros, uh, business culture. You know, they made $100 million off their companies. And they both identify as alphas and she in her own right makes her own money. He makes his own money, but they also have businesses together. And he speaks very highly of her. She speaks very highly of him. He's considered really respectable in the bro sphere. So I've watched him. I've watched a few of his podcasts. Sometimes slaves worked all the hours they were awake for their entire lives. In American history, in Egyptian history, in the rest of the world that had slaves, which is most of the world at some, some given point. I think like if they can do it, so can I. But then sometimes he has pretty base take. So I'm kind of like, I hate love. I kind of like him. I kind of don't like him. So she has a video called We Married for Business, The Truth About What Happened Next. And I watched the first minute or so. And it basically is them saying they're alpha, the alpha, no, alpha and alpha. And they're married and they're successful. So I thought, perfect. That lady who was rejected by a matchmaker for saying she wanted another alpha, this might be one of the avenues for her to find that. So I thought, why don't we watch this together and see what we learn as well? What is up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Layla Hormozzi. Layla. Of Sorry, Layla. What did I call her? Layla. Position.com. And in this video today, I actually want to share something a little bit different. Normally, it's business tactics, business advice, etc. So she's also a gym girl. She works out. She's got a good business. Like, um... You know, she really kills it. And actually, one of the things I respect about her husband is he had said in a past interview, if his wife was a man, she would be like 100 times more respected for the way she hustles. But because she's a woman, like people discount her. And he goes, it really bums me out because like she is so capable. But you know what I mean? Like we we're used to it as women, but it's nice to see a man understand that and see that perspective. And he is more popular than her, even though she also built the businesses, even though she also does the same, like even though it's very interesting, but it also is a reflection of women. Do we want female role models like this? Do we even care about these things? As I am this category of woman, yes, I consume this content like it's air, but not all women are in these industries in this hustle mode. That's why modern women are choosing to not run businesses and they do actually prefer to stay home. And I think there's something about that that we need to be aware of. So anyways, let's go into it. But I've got a lot of questions lately about a post I made about, you know, being a alpha or a powerful woman in a relationship. And so I actually wanted to bring my husband, Alex, uh, and business partner on this episode to really talk about like our relationship, why we chose the relationship we have today with each other, why we do things. We Wait, I want to see that original tweet because I just realized it says unpopular opinion. Alpha women need a super alpha man, not a passive one. Ooh. We, I didn't see the tweet when I first reviewed this. So that kind of changes the narrative a little bit because the narrative she says later in the video is that an alpha needs an alpha. But what she's saying is you need a super alpha, which actually was a mistake I made in my life. Because for me, I thought, oh, maybe I need a super alpha, somebody even more alpha than me. Not that I like think I'm an alpha because like I don't really subscribe to that language. Dominant. I thought I needed a more dominant man than me or woman than me. But then I realized like for my relationship, I just needed somebody that was on the same page as me and that loved me. I don't mind that my husband is uh, less aggressive than I am. I mean, he stands his ground. He's very confident. His confidence is really what I love about him um, amongst other things. But that is different. See, she's falling into the same heterosexual trope then. She is looking for someone who's more alpha than her, which is interesting because then doesn't that just make her a beta? Like in comparison, like if an alpha isn't, what does that mean? Hmm. Hmm. When you start comparing who's more alpha, doesn't that just make the other person a beta? Now I'm confused about their language. And so I actually wanted to bring my husband, Alex, uh, and business partner on this episode to really talk about like our relationship, why we chose the relationship we have today with each other, why we do things the way we do, and just our like opinions and beliefs on things. And disclaimer for this video is like, I really truly don't believe there's a right or wrong. I have friends who have completely opposite relationships to us and it works really well for them. This is just what works for us and we get a lot of questions about it and so we wanted to share. And so with that being said, let me know what you think in the comments and if Alex and I should do more videos together. What's up guys? So like I said in the description, um, really this video today is about the post I made the other day about alpha females and alpha men and having a power couple dynamic. And so. Um, I wanted to bring Alex to the video today because uh, there was a lot of comments from men and a lot of comments from women and I kind of wanted to have both of us express our sides and our viewpoints. And so 
just as a disclaimer, like this video is made for people who are asking us, you know, like how do you achieve the relationship that you guys have? And they're looking for something like that. And so like, I'm not poo-pooing people who have maybe a, a- That's nice. That's like a nice awareness. I agree. Okay, so we're watching them with the model of their relationship, not to compare it to other people's. That's good. <clears throat> A more traditional setup in their marriage or maybe you are like a really powerful woman that's dating a more passive guy like i'm not saying that that's wrong or that i think it's bad or it doesn't work uh adrian says he already does not come across alpha i will say he's a very masculine man but he's very chill so alex is incredibly chill and she's much more type a to me he seems very relaxed in everything I watch him in. He's just the most like, he doesn't care. He's just here to like do good business. So I will say, even though he's very masculine and he is very, obviously like a man, he's also very, very chill. And I would say she lacks, le she has less chill. So I think that's actually the dis the difference between the two. You know what I mean? Um, the nose thing is a breathable, it's a breathable band on his nose. I think it's a brand he works with, but I'm not sure work like there's always things that work but what we're talking about is what works for us and so these are our opinions these are our viewpoints and our beliefs and you don't need to defend your marriage to us if it's contrary mm -hmm. to these we don't care <laughs> and we don't care uh what you do or how you run your marriage and so um we believe you if it works um that being said i kind of wanted to share my my kind of background and my story and then let alex kind of share his which is just i made this post basically saying that an alpha female needs an alpha male and like you know i wasn't really even paying attention to like terminology or anything like that or language when i was doing it i was just like this is just what i like a gut like came out of my mouth and it caused a lot of controversy because i think it it violates a lot of people's beliefs about what a marriage should look like and i think that there's a lot more nuance to it than mm. i made in a you know 30 second video and so i kind of want to extrapolate it out here with alex i i stated in a post i made that i actually used to date men guys whatever who were more passive than me and so they were actually more baby this is interesting because alex does seem more passive than her i've always thought of alex as a very passive dude in the business world even when he's trying to be very like toppy he comes across like not a bottom but very passive like he's very chill like again that's how i think of like personality differences like my partner isn't passive like he's not a pushover he's just very chill so when you have this and look at her you can see the differences now between their energy he's not trying to take over the conversation he knows it's her channel he's being very chill and even in his other interviews he he also remains like very chill so look at the way we all use language differently i would describe alex as more passive than layla but she doesn't describe that as the same so than me and i stated that it took me I want to say up until I was like 22 to realize that I was dating men like that, not because I was more attracted to them and because they had the qualities I wanted in a partner and all these things, but because I was doing it out of fear. And it's a really common thing for women to do is that you seek a man who is more passive or more beta because you seek to control them. And so it's like, if you can put someone in a box and someone listens to you and does what you say all the time and they don't go outside the realm of who you label them, it's much easier to feel safe in a relationship. And so it took me a lot of like self-reflection and really hard looks in the mirror to realize that that was why I was dating people like that. And so what I was sharing is that like, when I first met Alex, I was actually super uncomfortable in the relationship, like probably the first like year, year and a half, because like, there's no, there's no containing Alex in a box. There's no, he is who he is. And he's, he's changing his identity all the time. And the thing is, is that if you want someone who's more powerful, they're going to be of that right but it's not going to feel as secure as safe especially for women and so i put that out there because i'm like i actually just want to help women who are maybe they're frustrated with the relationships they're in they're not happy they're not understanding why they're not achieving what they want and my plead to you is that look for what you want in a partner out of not fear or desperation but out of inspiration it's like what inspires you what do you admire about people rather than making these decisions of who you date out of fear because you're scared about not being able to control this person and the control is all an illusion anyways because typically those men end up being resentful of those women who try to control them so it just backfires on you in the end um and i've seen that happen and i've i've experienced it in relationships myself but i've just not seen it i think that if you could just consider this other viewpoint it would be more useful I think an interesting part of the discussion is also like getting into what alpha even means, right? I think I think as as far as we're using it, we're thinking it as a placeholder for the word power. And power is non-binary in that oh, it exists oh. on a continuum. So you have non-binary. Everybody heard it here. 
you know, not like powerful or not powerful, but how powerful are you? And I think that within trying to keep a masculine and feminine dynamic within a relationship, if you have a woman that is more powerful, it is our belief that having a guy who is even more powerful maintains that masculine and feminine dynamic. And this is not us poo-pooing. Like if you have a marriage and you feel like you were the more powerful one in that marriage, good for you. Fantastic. We're happy for you. You don't need to feel insecure and, and defend it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we bring this up because, you know, for me, I had a different kind of like the, the flip side is, is my story. It's so interesting when people talk about like who feels more powerful in the relationship. Um, I don't think I relate to those words like those like it's good to know that you can have a relationship in which people relate to those words and that feels like it works for you. I don't really relate to those words. I don't think I think of who's more powerful in the relationship. I just think of like I just don't think of it that way. Right. So interesting that they do. But I understand like I had this dream when I was younger of having like a power couple relationship. But I realized that I don't need it. I just thought it would be a nice way to do things. And I think, look, I'm a very flexible partner. I can basically vibe with all different types of people. I don't need a very specific type of person. I just need somebody who's confident, self-aware, and shares my values. So it wouldn't be that difficult for me to end up in a any kind of dynamic, true, like in a realistic way, except one I think where I don't think I would find it attractive if my partner was like, I'm more powerful than you. I'd be like, oh, sounds weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that would quite like work for me, but I think it's because I just don't understand the need to have power over your partner, but I can understand the need for a person to have more power in the relationship to help mm, guide you. But see, I think that's cringe. So like for me, I'm not into it, but you do you, right? Okay, let's keep listening. Story. And so for me, I always, I dated, I dated girls that I, I would say I had love for, but I did not respect. And I think that that ended up being a continuous issue. And I honestly didn't know that another way existed. And so that's why we're making the video is that like we both went for a very long time, not really imagining that another dynamic existed. And for me, I pretty much just steamrolled every woman that I was with, you know, and I would talk to them after we'd be out of a relationship and they're like, oh my God, my life's so much better now. I feel like I was just like completely being not submissive, but uh, stifled, suppressed. yeah, suppressed that's in good. our relationship. And I was like, well, that sounds terrible. And it's not something I do. Like, it's not something that's really good. Uh, like awareness. Like, I think that is something that even I've like gotten feedback on from partners where other partners felt like I was too domineering or they felt like I they came second to my job, which to be fair, I wasn't in, I was dating those people to see if we were compatible. So obviously we weren't and that's probably why it felt that way. I just think when you have a compatible partner with you, they feel like they're a part of the team rather than like second to your job. So I think that that is a really good thing to pay attention to. So I really like that they know that about themselves. I think that's a very good point. Like, that's a very good thing to know about yourself. You know what I mean? That is, mm, I actually think that's like kind of it, baby. Like, know yourself well enough to know, like, what do I need? Then I'm like actively suppressing people. But I think a lot of times just like if someone, you know, uh, is expansive in nature, then some people will kind of shrink away, etc. And so for me, Layla was the first girl that I had a, a relationship where it was really built on respect first. Like I met her and immediately asked her to work for me and said, hey, even if our relationship doesn't work, like I really want to work together because I respected her skill set and I respected her mind and I respected her ability to make decisions and I respected her viewpoint on the world and the values that she was ascribing. And we had immediate trust within the first two weeks. I gave Layla all my bank accounts um, and asked her to start collecting cash for my businesses for me. Um, the gold digger. Yeah, right. Cue, cue gold <laughs> digger. the gold right digger. Right. She'll steal everything comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have never had a relationship that was founded in respect and I think that if you want to be a quote power couple then most both people must have power right like if you want to be a power couple mm. both people must have power now you might not want that and in, in which case awesome do whatever you want you know what I mean but I think that in order for that to happen that would be a requisite of a power couple is that also can I just say this angle is the weirdest decision in terms of filming they must have not had another option because it is the weirdest angle to have them like looking down and us looking up their noses, like very weird angle. Both people are powerful. And I think another kind of interesting one is that people always like to have 
people like to label things, right? Because it makes them feel better, but it doesn't make the labeling actually correct or right. It just makes it easier for you to process the information. And so you can think of power in terms of silos as well, which is Layla probably makes more decisions in our relationship than I do. I just don't like the vast majority. Like I don't have any dog in the fight in terms of where we go to dinner. Like I just, there's just a, a much smaller select handful of things that I care about. And they're probably some things in your relationship that you care about more and some things that they care about more. And so for us, it's a natural delegation of like, well, she cares about all these things more than I do. So why would I, I don't, I don't care. So do whatever you want. Some people see that as, some people could, could frame that as, oh, Alex doesn't have the power in that. Sure, okay, like whatever you want. That is just me describing it as it currently is. On the flip side, if we have a, ma a major decision, we'll both make it. And mm -hmm. if there's a decision that more falls in my camp, you know what I mean, then I'll make it, right? And, and I think that's by the nature of like, I'm more tactical, like execution based, and you're more big picture, big vision based. And so I think like, you only give a shit about the decisions that are gonna affect the big, you know, like macro of our lives. Yeah. Like, you don't give a shit. I'm like, where do you want to go to dinner? And you're like, I'd literally rather jump off this balcony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that's, and that's, we actually run the marriage very similar to how we run the business in terms of, it, it, it functions that way, which is what, what, what are the big moves we're going to make? What are the big rock decisions? And then like, I will think a long time about that. And then kind of like, this is what I'm thinking. Are you in alignment? Yes. And if we're not in alignment, then one of our, one of our biggest rules that's been so useful for us is like, if we both don't agree, we don't move forward. And that would go with anything. And it's not, and I think that's the kind of the key is what is my job? What is your job? And then what do we do together is kind of the key for me. Like, what do we decide together? They're just like, it makes things more efficient, not for everyone to have to like make those decisions. Like, I don't want to have to make the decision about like what soap we're buying. Just like buy the soap. I trust you. Thank you. Like, I don't want to have to make every like little decision that I'm, you know, unless I'm at the store with you or at least, you know, that kind of stuff. But if we're making big purchases, if we're deciding where to live or move, like obviously that has to be a team effort. I don't really want to wake up one day and have my partner be like, we're moving to Germany. I'm like, um, pourquoi? who like I did not plan for this so I personally you know I think it's like a team effort what are we doing where are we moving what are we doing this for and it has to be like a pros and cons list of what is good for the relationship so I like the way they're talking about it right I think that's really important but I also think that sometimes with certain things partners like to like I know in my relationship they're just things like I make the decisions about and there are things my partner makes the decision about you know what I mean but it's like it, it's just because I don't know you just like you make the best decision with the best person who's equipped and like that's just it like it's just you know what I mean you know earlier on in the relationship and this is something that I learned I think I tried to if I didn't get agreement I would just overpower and I try not to do that anymore oh. um and it's been much better. Yeah, and I think like that's something, that's a point to this, which is like, when we say power couple, and I was saying, you know, alpha female, alpha male, it's like, if Alex is with a woman who is not a powerful woman or is much more submissive, he and this is the same with like a team surrounding Alex, he will just steamroll them completely. And mm -hmm. then they say, I'm suppressed and mm -hmm. you're, you know, overpowering me and you're a narcissist and all this crap, right? So it's like, you almost- You know, my farm brother, in the beginning of his marriage with my sister-in-law, there was definitely like, I remember having a conversation where she was like, your brother is not letting me speak. And I was like, no, no, no. It's not that he's not letting you speak. It's that he steamrolls. So he will let you speak, but you have to make it clear that like you're going to speak. Because my, my brother is like, he's the same way, a type A personality, like very much like he knows, you know. So we would practice together and I would like walk into the room and I would like back her up because he doesn't mean to do it just like I don't mean to do it. But we often like look at people we're like, what? What's your input? Like, what are you questioning? Like, what are you questioning? So she's so good at it now where she like puts him in his place or vice versa. Because like, again, they're young. We're all just young people being married. Like, it's just young. They're all young. And they're all just figuring out dynamics and how to communicate. And it's all from a good place. And I think what's key here is if it's from a very good place, then it's just kind of a way to figure out your 
how to communicate in a relationship. If it's from a really good place, then you know no one's going to beat you. No one's going to force you. No one's going to – my brother is never going to, like, force her to do something that, like, she hates. But he also needs her to explain, like, the hate, right? So, like, I'll sit there in the background and I'm – and I'll just be like, I'm going to – like, you know, we're just eating food and I'm watching and he'll – I don't know. He'll like, maybe it's about socks, like something dumb, like put your socks in the hamper. This is a dumb example because this is not the example. My brother's very clean. But let's say my brother wasn't clean and he had to put his socks in the hamper. She would be like, it stresses me out that you don't put socks in the hamper. He'd be like, what's the big deal? Just like pick them up and put them in the laundry. Right? Like, let's say something really dumb like that. I would just sit there in the background and be like, ah, ah, ah. let her speak. And he's like, what? what? And like, they sit there. They're like kids. People are kids. All adults are children. Everybody's a child. OK, everyone, if you're having a problem in your relationship, it's because you're a child and you haven't figured out how to talk it out. That's how I look at life. If you cannot solve a problem, it's because you're a child. Right. And that's not insulting. I mean, it literally like that's how I feel. That's the language I use for myself. If I cannot figure something out, I'm being a child. It's like I am I am without knowledge. I am being a, a innocent little floaty child. I'm not insulting myself. I'm not insulting my brother. I'm not insulting you. I'm saying for me to contextualize how a grown adult can't problem solve this, you're being a child. So the idea is when you know you're not problem solving, you have to give a space for the problem solving to occur versus the doubling down. And so again, it's about knowing you're coming from a good place, knowing you're not trying to be malicious or you're planning some malicious takeover. It's about knowing you want to problem solve. So for me, it's like, okay, how do I problem solve this thing? even though I feel like I should be smart enough to figure it out. I should be very good, at, but you can't figure it out, which means there's some part of you that is like unaware. You don't have the knowledge. You're without knowing. You know what I mean? Anyways, so I like these dynamics where I understand two dominant personalities or two people that feel very strongly and yet they still want someone to lead. My sister-in-law still wants my brother to lead, okay? I wouldn't use that language in my relationship, but in her relationship, it makes her feel secure. So it's valid. It makes her feel secure knowing my brother is leading them. But also she stands up for herself and she has a place in that marriage and she absolutely gets her word in. And like, it's not like he steamrolls her because like she won't let him anymore because like, you know, she took the Britney course. <laughs> but like, again, it's like, okay. They're in it together at the end of the day versus like a, a fresh and fit kind of relationship, which both of them are single and not married. In that relationship, I think Myron would need a woman who could steamroll. He wouldn't even talk to her about bills or how to do business or what he was doing next because he would think this is man stuff, which by the way, some women like. There are some women in the world who want a man who never tells them how the business is running and only puts money in their account. Okay, you do you. Almost around anyone that's as powerful as Alex, you have to have a voice of your own. And I see that with like the people we hire and the teams we have too. Like if someone's not smart, hardworking and powerful on their own, like they can't, they won't like, survive around you. They'll just end up quitting or, or something. I think that's normal. I, I, I think that's really important to have like a really confident team around you. But again, the confidence comes from within them. It's not about arrogance or ego. It's about, I know I'm capable of doing this because I have the proof and the evidence. You know, not fake it till you make it, just like a strong confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, we use the words powerful mostly because like these are things that people have described us as and we're just relaying this back because we get, we get probably, I wanna say like a third of the questions we get in general are like about our marriage dynamic and we don't talk about it much at all. And it's not because we haven't done private stuff, it's just that we, we just, we both run different schedules and we do stuff on different timetables. So we decided to get together to make this video. But like maintaining the, the masculine feminine dynamic, I think another interesting point is that there's boxes for that. And so yeah. if we're both in the business, we're both probably in a more masculine dynamic when we're in the workspace. And I'm really just treating Layla as though she were COO, you know what I mean? Because she is. And so if we were not married, how would that relationship look? And that's pretty much how the relationship is within the business. Like we have So this is why I do, even though Alex has, oh my God, there is a video of him with the worst takes in the world. There are some videos I've seen of him with the worst takes in the world, but this in general is a much, this is more my speed in terms of how a relationship dynamic works about respecting your female partner, bringing her in, knowing that she's hustling, 
this could never work in like a fresh and fit bubble or a Andrew Tate bubble or another one of those bubbles. This is a very specific entrepreneurial bubble where the women are right there with the guys, you know? So again, paying attention to that and how that dynamic works. I also, correct me if anyone's a big fan of Alex in the audience, I don't think they have children, right? So I think they're a childless power couple. So I think that plays a role. You know what I mean? If conflict, you know, around key decisions, things I usually want to go faster, she tends to want to go slower. I, I tend to be more trusting, she tends to be less trusting. And that's kind of a yin and yang ba balance. And I think that we also have, as we've got grown to trust one another more and more, I actually think that we've we've polarized a little bit, believe it or not, because I think if Layla got hit by a bus tomorrow or I got hit by a bus tomorrow, we would probably come towards the middle, right? I would probably become a little bit more conservative, a little bit less risk taking, a little bit less trusting. And she would become a little bit more trusting, more risk taking, et cetera, because she'd have to compensate for the fact that I'm not there to push the envelope. And so we've kind of, we take those roles and those dynamics in our marriage because we just continue to increase the trust that the other person's going to represent and hang their balance right um and then ultimately make mm -hmm. the best decisions i mean we've even said if i didn't exist layla wouldn't have started the businesses and if she didn't exist i would have ha i would have too many right and so it's really having that balance that allows us to you know to make the best decisions um and i think that's why this the dynamic so i will say if that's the dynamic where he is more into having the businesses and she is less into having the businesses that alone is a precedent for how to acknowledge who is more alpha in a, in a way because I know for my life like I'm so career focused I love to work there's just so much satisfaction and stimulation I get from it that is unlike other people in my life uh, especially other women in my life who yes like to work but they don't like to work as much as I work some do some don't like Two of my besties are definitely working girls. They have like full-fledged careers. They're educated. They're very focused. Uh, other set of my friends, they're like interested in working. Some of them don't. Like some of them are just kind of like chill. Same with the guys. Some of the guys I know are very focused on their career. And some of the guys I know are just kind of like fucking around. Everyone's doing their own thing based off of their desired goals. But the person who has the most interest in businesses the most interest in pursuing those businesses, I think it's okay to say technically that they are more quote unquote alpha if this is sort of the language we're using. What do you guys think? Because in that case, that makes a lot of sense to me. It also makes a little bit more sense to me why people focus on him as the main business person because it sounds like they just said that that's kind of true. What do you guys think about that? works really well but that's the business side on the on the relational side we we kind of like we take you know like we take hats off so it's like okay hey i need and lately even said she'd be like i need husband alex right now it's like okay got it like let me like step yeah. into that for a second and then i can recalibrate and I think that's taken us years to learn, you know, a lot of the reasons that we see like couples that come to us and they're, you know, working in the business together and they're like, I just don't know if we should because it's really hard. We can't, you know, like we're, it's really hard for us to transition through it. It's just a muscle you have to keep flexing until you get it right. And like now for us, I feel like it's super easy to go from work to home. It's almost like everything about mm -hmm. us changes. So like something we talk about is like, if people see us like in public in our own like dynamic outside of work, they'd be like, what? Like, who are these people? Because it's just like so different than how we act like on camera and at work because we also never want to bring our relationship stuff to work. Like I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. I don't want to make people feel like they can't talk to me about Alex because we're married. I don't want people to feel like they can't talk to Alex about me because we're married. And so it's like, it's better to keep it professional in the workplace. That's, I wonder how much drama happens because drama follows people. People are drama, right? Drama wouldn't exist without people. So I do kind of wonder how much drama there is at work and how much they have to stifle. But I, I will say that I, I know it's less than other places. So I wonder if they're experiencing it less in general. Um, you know, Jasmine, good point. Honestly, I'm not even sure what alpha means anymore at this point. It means nothing. It's just like everything is a construct. Language is a construct. It's all meaningless. It's all just like the way you brand a video, right? The way you brand a tweet, the way um, you have a conversation with people. That's all all of this ever means. Like ultimately, all that's why I think it's so important when you're popping bubbles and you're having introspection, extrospection, realization, you're having the realization that like nothing is real. Like, yes, there's a real, but like, this isn't real. Like alphas aren't real. Betas aren't real. None of this is real language. It's only language we like map on to behavior or aesthetic. And then we go, that's what a goth is. That's what a punk is. And yes, I'm all about it. I think those things matter if they matter to you, but they don't actually matter, which is why, again, 
like popping the bubbles is so crazy because if you form your whole identity over being a red pillar or a manosphere guy or this, and then you realize like, you know, you're choosing this life. Like this is a choice. You keep saying you're doing it in retaliation to society. You keep saying you have to be this way, but like, this is just a choice. You're choosing to be this way, which is a very hard pill for any of us to swallow that we are choosing our lives because it genuinely feels like the world is like attacking us or doing something to us or we didn't choose this. It's true. We didn't choose the way we were born or the families we were born into. We didn't choose like the bodies we were born into, but we often do have a lot more choice in how we navigate the world. And we do get to choose what words we map onto ourselves, whether you know, we pick up the tool to do it or not, it's still possible, you know? Place uh, as much as you can when you're married, because I think it just, it just makes for a more comfortable environment. And that's always, you know, typically in like a married couple that's running a business, it's one of the main concerns. They're like, well, how do you guys handle conflict? How, do, what's your dynamic like? And like, if people see dysfunction in the workplace between two married people, no good talent is going to take you seriously. Yeah. And that being said, I think that having united front from, it's almost like parenting, you know what I mean? Like within the company, and this is not to say that the people in the company are children, that's not the point. I'm just saying, I meant more so that having a united front, especially if you're married, is important, right? And so, you know, if you have a CEO, COO dynamic in, in the relationship, making sure that you kind of come to the table on the same terms is important. And if we do disagree on something, we'll never outwardly, or say rather publicly, like smash the other person um, if we disagree. It'd be more like a, direct message like, hey, let's, you know, circle back on that. Um, and then we'll recalibrate and then we'll, you know, recome in front of the, 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 the team, right? And so have, making sure that we also both mutually respect one another publicly is important because if I disrespect Layla or undermine Layla on the call, she'll lose respect to the team and I will too, because they'll be like, man, that was out of line, right? And it, the same is, you know, true in reverse. One thing that you said that I, I wanted to piggyback on was, I think we've been able to switch back and forth between like the, the the business and the marriage dynamic because we've just gotten better at kind of transitioning with like the cues of reading each other's body language and understanding even like the tone of voice that we talk to one another in when we're in the marriage dynamic versus the business dynamic is different. And like we usually we can almost seamlessly pick up on it now. But before that, we literally had to be like, hey, I need like or she would say like, I need I need husband Alex. Like I, I don't need business Alex mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I'd be like, all right, my bad. Sorry. I mean, just like, you know. Yeah. I wonder, that's a really good skill. I actually don't, I think people really underestimate how much of a skill this is because this has improved my life just so much realizing like which Brittany I was in the moment, what role was I playing, um, how much attention I needed, what was going on. I don't, I think people completely underestimate taking off different hats or wearing different hats or being a different part of yourself, I cannot explain to you. People think it's silly and I see their one-dimensional attitude totally sabotage their life. Sometimes it works if you have a one-dimensional partner, but when you're multifaceted, when you're a dad and a working person and all these things, you need to be, you can't just be CEO with your kids. You have to be dad with your kids, you know? So again, I think this is a very underestimated skill and I really think you need to be, again, introspective with yourself and say, okay, how many of me's are there and which version of myself can I be when I'm Auntie Brittany? You know, I just caught up with my nieces and nephews and we're all like little, you know, we're talking on the phone, FaceTime or whatever it is, um, whatever app we use. And I'm talking to them and they're, you know, I'm going into anti mode. They're, you know, I'm, I'm reacting differently. I'm talking differently. I'm using different language. I'm thinking about how they understand me. Um, and same when I'm with my partner, same when I'm dealing with my cat, same when I'm at work, like it's a different version of myself because, and that's how multifaceted I am. And that's how wonderfully skilled I am, right? Instead of thinking like, oh, that's how inauthentic I am. No, that's how skilled you are to have multiple, to be multifaceted and to have different versions of yourself that you're able to be. Because imagine you're in a relationship where you can't turn off work mode and you wonder why marriages end in divorce because people aren't multifaceted. You know, be nicer. Um. <laughs> you know, obviously this isn't- No, anti what, Brittany? Anti, anti Brittany, like anti Brittany, like aunt, aunt, not auntie, not A-N-T-I, auntie, auntie. <laughs> Everybody, like not everyone wants to work together. Not everyone wants to build something with their spouse. Like I, I think just like a couple of the reasons for myself, and I, I know Alex has some too, is like why all the relationships that both of us had prior to this were totally different than what we have now. And so I think for us, it, like we like talking about it and sharing it with people and people like hearing about it, I think, because it's like, it's 
it works better for us than the prior relationships. And I think like, the main thing that if I could like put it into words, just like it's a shared reality, which is like the yeah. most oh. important things to me. Let's go shared reality. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Why do I always say you need to share reality with your partner? I know it sounds crazy because everyone's like, what does it mean? You need to share reality. It means you have to be on the same page. You have to agree on what it means to be married. You have to agree on things. You can't be fighting with your partner every fucking day, people. You have to agree on what is reality, on what are we doing? What is a relationship? What does love mean? Oh, yes. Layla, Leela, Layla, whatever. Layla, yes. It's like you have to agree on reality, my bros. Me in life are also the most important things to Alex in life. And before... Why? Does anyone, does any boomer or like not boomer, does anyone who know? why is my screen blinking like that? Do you guys see that on screen? Why is my video cutting in and out every time I click my mouse? What is going on? Like the people that I would date, it's just like their ambitions were so small and their vision was so small that it felt like I wasn't inspired by them. You know, I wasn't intellectually stimulated when I was talking to them. And I was like, I just don't believe that because I am a more like, I, I don't know, alpha woman, whatever you want to call it, whatever the terminology is, like, I don't believe that I need to settle for a man who's more passive or more beta. I believe that I could just find someone who in proportion to my alpha or what, power, whatever you want to call it, is so much more. And it was like the moment I met Alex, you guys have heard the video where I've talked about like the list I made of what I wanted in a man. I met him and I was like, this is everything. And it made me super uncomfortable at first, but like, it ends up being so much <laughs> better in the long run, you know, because I think in those relationships where where there's not power, the, the the other side of that is like there may be more comfort, more security, more ability to, you know, I guess feel good in the short term. I think it. I got bored. Like I got bored. I felt like it was a detractor from the other things in my life. We weren't walking the same path towards the same end goal. It was like we were walking separate paths holding hands, tugging each other back and forth. And that was just something I didn't want to do for the rest of my life. I wanted to be with somebody who I felt like we inspired each other, we poured into each other and we helped each I remember I was dating a guy, uh, the guy who was like 12 years older than me. Okay, good. You guys aren't seeing any blinking on the screen. Okay, never mind. It was just like driving me nuts. Okay, I'm glad you're not seeing it. That's okay. That's all that matters. So I was dating a guy who was like 12 years older than me, right? And I remember him and I sat down and we talked about what we wanted for our life. Um, and I was like, oh, you guys saw some blinks. Oh God. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Oh, interrupting my storytelling. Focus, Brittany. Okay. I was dating a guy who was like 12 years older than me. And we sat down and talked about our goals. And we both had like this goal of sort of having like uh, a little place in the woods, maybe in Seattle, because that's where we both were. And we were thinking about how to do it, maybe get a bus and re like redo it and make it really cool. And then maybe like, you know, just like have all, the we had all these like dreams and so I got really excited and I started like working extra hard and I was like, I'm going to save money. Let's hustle. Let's do this. And then I noticed that he wasn't doing it. He wasn't like doing the thing. And I was like, hey, why aren't you doing the thing? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, we talked about what we wanted and we agreed. So let's do it. And he was like, yeah, but like eventually. And I was like, oh, you're already 12 years older than me. There is no eventually. Like we're doing it now. And so I was like, let's work. Let's do like, tw you know, two to three jobs. Let's do this. Let's figure it out. And he was more of a dreamer. And I realized like the next guy I dated, he was a dreamer, like big talk. We talked about all these houses we wanted, what kind of life we wanted and what we wanted to do, but didn't make the effort. He was a dreamer. I kept dating dreamers. And I was like, okay, I need to not date a dreamer. I need to date somebody who's very realistic and very grounded and very patient and very aware of how long things will take. So we're not going to be rich tomorrow. We're not going to have a house tomorrow. We're not going to have anything tomorrow. It's We're not going to have quads, you know, our quads worked out tomorrow. It's going to take effort and time. And I need someone who's going to go on a very patient journey with me. And so many people are dreamers in the world and I can't blame them because the world gives you so many opportunities to dream. But I don't mean dream in the good way, like motivationally. I mean dream in the crippling way where it keeps you not actually attaining goals because you think, oh, if I start, I'll just do it by tomorrow. You won't. You need to start now because it's going to take you 10 years. Like it's not going to happen tomorrow. You're not going to hit a big. You're not going to go viral tomorrow. And even if you do, who cares? So many people go viral and it doesn't matter. So you know, once I found my my partner, the one I married, so much of us was on the, we were on the same page. We were we were not dreamers. We're not 
very big dreamers. We're very big goal setters. And then we try to do what it takes to attain the goal. But we're not like we don't dream together. We just go, hey, what do you want? And I'm like, hey, I want this. OK, cool. Let's do that. And then we just do that. It's very nice. It's like who it's like such a difference between dating somebody who's like always in their head and always fantasizing about some big dream they'll never attain or they don't realize how much effort goes into it. Like they don't realize like so him and I are planning one year, five years and 10 years out. And so we're thinking, OK, where are we going to be in one year? And like we have to stay this path for at least 12 months. And then we have to stay this path for at least five years. And then we have to stay this path at least 10 years, like different paths of leveling. So once we reach the year goal, that puts us into the five-year goal, which puts us into the 10-year goal. So this is like the next like 16 years of our life. You know what I mean? And it takes, there's so much, there's going to be so much temptation to deviate. There's going to be so much temptation to do something else. It's not the same thing as an opportunity though. Do not mistake temptation for opportunity. The temptation is not opportunity, right? So my brain goes, okay, when temptation comes into view, don't give into it and say, I would love to do that, but it doesn't correlate with my 16-year plan. Thank you. But opportunities should add to your plan, not deviate from the plan. They should add to the plan, not deviate from the plan. And I noticed that in the past, I would like give into temptation because I thought, oh, I'm never going to get this opportunity again. But it wasn't an opportunity. It was just temptation. And so that's the new restructuring of my goal setting is like, okay, what is temptation and was an opportunity? And make sure you know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to know the difference and usually I just have to do some research and I'll figure out which is which, but it, it comes with not rushing and it comes with really meditating. So that's the key I've used. I just used it this weekend actually. I was like meditating on this like, is this an opportunity or a distraction or a opportunity or temptation? It was a distraction. It was temptation. It was not an opportunity. And I'm like, I'm so glad I meditated on that. So that's the big difference. Each other achieve what we want in life. And so that was, that's my reason for it at least. Yeah. And I have, um, and I'll, and I'll th throw my two cents in there. So I was actually engaged at one point, uh, before I met Layla and I would say that that relationship, they had big vision, but it was a different vision for what they wanted their life to look like. And it was constantly a source of conflict because I was like, I'm doing this. Like, this is like, I, I am not going to sacrifice what I want. And I'm not going to like, you know, I was, I was in my 20s. I was like, I'm in my 20s. Like I'm not compromising my goals and nor should she have, you know what I mean? And I think that that ended up basically them sacrificing was, you know, the short term solution, which was not a solution. And then you know, obviously we decided to, to part ways and it was for that reason. And so I think that it's not only having somebody who has ambition, but has an ambition that is the same as yours, right? And your ambition might be to have the most amazing fucking family on planet Earth. Awesome. So this is such good advice is, is your ambition the same? Does your outlook look that? Because so many people date each other, think, oh, we'll change when we get together. We'll do something different. And maybe that happens. Again, it's about growing together. Can you grow together? I was just talking to my partner about this. How the biggest success tool we have in our arsenal is that we're able to grow together. Even the small amount of time we've been together, I can't tell you how much we've already like, like, like a great anime, bro, linked arms and fucking like had the same focus. It's kind of amazing. It's a great feeling to have when you're 100% on the same page. Have you ever dreamed about starting a business with a friend or with a sibling or with somebody and you can just tell you're not, you don't have the same dream. You don't have the same goal, whatever word you want to use. Him and I have the same goal. Okay. We have the same focus. So we're able to be like, this doesn't like work within the focus of what we're doing right now. And it's so tempting again to get distracted, to like give into temptation. But I will say that is the huge, whether it's starting a family, whether it's keeping on the business. I mean, that's something we talk about all the time, right? Like family versus business, family versus business. Like that's a very serious conversation. So serious. It's the se most serious conversation I've ever had in my whole life. Are we going to be family people? Or are we going to be business people? Are we going to have a family like kids? Are we going to raise the next generation? Are we going to take on that responsibility? Because we're very serious about it. Or are we going to take on the responsibility of building a business and focusing on a career? Uh, very different goals. Because in order for us to be good parents in our mind, I neither of us can focus 100% on a career. A job, a career can't be our focus. Because the kind of parents we would want to be, you can't be working 80 hours a week. Sorry. You can't be present in your child's life 
and work 80 hours a week. That's not how it works. Like time just doesn't allow you to do that. So we have to make that really very serious decision. And that is like something that, again, I don't think a lot of people think about. They're not thinking about, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to have a career where I work 80 hours a week and still not see my kid and then claim I'm a present parent. You're not a present parent if you're working 80 hours a week, period. And that sucks, whether it's your choice or the choice you have to make for your family. You know what I mean? Whether you feel like you were pushed into that or you choose it, regardless, you're not a present parent, in my opinion. So this isn't just like a business thing. This is just aligned mission, aligned values. Where do we want to go? How do we want to get there? And so for us, it was so, for me, it was so rare to find a girl that wanted to do what I wanted to do and wanted to get there the same way. Honestly, once I saw those two things, I was like, we'll figure out everything else on the way. And that's kind of how we, you know, that's kind of how we did it. Well, it's the same as, you know, hiring people and like finding people for your team. Like if you want to attract really great talent, like you want them to be on board with the same mission, the same vision you have. You have to have a vision that's so big and encompassing that they can fit theirs within it. And it's almost the same when you find a partner. It's like, do we fit in each other's vision? And so it's like, that vision could be a family. That vision could be starting a charity together. That vision could be so many things, but it's just like, do we fit in each other's vision? I think that was really obvious when we first met. It's like, we had all the same interests. We had the same values and we saw the world the same way. And we were both like, let's do this and do it together. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and this is me just talking to the guys at least like. Most of my audience. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Excluding the 4.9% of my audience that's female. So talking to the guys like, it's a different dynamic um, because it's far more common to find, especially if you are more alpha guy and most entrepreneurs tend to be a little bit more assertive, a little bit more dominant by, by nature because you're more risk taking because you're in business, right? It's really easy to find women who will just like fall in line, right? It's mm. just, it's very easy to do that. There's a line of them and there's, and, and hey, if that's what you want, there's nothing wrong with it. That's the th like, there's nothing wrong with whatever you want. But if you continue to, have those relationships and feel like something is missing, then this is why we're making this video is that maybe there is something else that's out there. And so for me, I just saw that Layla was, was just made of steel. And I knew that where I wanted to go and where I wanted to go in my life was going to be rarefied air. And I knew that I was not going to stop trying. Even if I never got there, I knew I was not gonna stop trying and I wanted someone who could hang with me. I think that in some of the high pressure situations that Layla and I have been in, I think many mm. of the people that I had had in my past would have crumbled or would have been doing the opposite, which is just like- Ugh, That is so important. How does your partner handle stress? How does your partner handle things not going well? So many dynamics. I think I've heard Myron actually talking about this and he's just a good example to use as, a, as another example, but I've even heard Myron say like, oh, when stuff hits the fan, like men have to carry the burden. Women don't want to do it. Women aren't going to carry the burden. Um, you know, women are going to crumble under the pressure. And the truth is, is like someone always crumbles under a certain amount of pressure because stress is a lot. And I think I'd rather have a partner that we crumble. Like I notice I'm the kind of person that if everyone else is crumbling around me, somehow I get like this ability to just like be there and focus. And then if I'm crumbling, I like when other people are able to be there. So I feel like my partner and I rise to the occasion very efficiently. But when you can't rise to the occasion, I think that's what's so detrimental is like if you're both crumbling, oh my gosh. Now it's not bad for one person to crumble under the stress. It's bad if you're both crumbling under the stress. And I think that that's why it's so important to have one person who's like, again, both people are able to rise to the occasion and they're able to say like, okay, I'm gonna get shit done. Like this is what's gonna happen, no problem. And I think that that seems to be the biggest issue I see in my past and in relationship is like both people crumble and then what are you going to do like trying to get me on the sidelines it's trying to get me to quit trying to say hey you know maybe you should take it easy maybe maybe you shouldn't work so much maybe you should x y and z you know we should do this instead and and um rather than you know when you get knocked down someone's like is standing on the side of the room being like get the fuck back up let's go and that's what i wanted you know what I mean? And I didn't know that. I just, we stumbled into this. And Layla had this, you know, Layla went like a hundred dates and with like her big list and would just like look at the guy and be like, no, you're not the list. And then like move us on. I, I, I did not have that. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of lucked into it because Layla was probably like my 20th date uh, on like apps. And I was like, okay, cool, done. This is great. Um, so I didn't expect that. But now that I, now that I have this experience and we get questions about it all the time, which is why we're making the video, it just works really well. Um, and I can say that me observing our relationship from the outside is like, 
we're just partners like through and through with everything just all the way and uh that kind of ride or die mentality permeates through every aspect mm -hmm. and it's ba it's a foundation of respect and i think what's interesting about this because i was talking to trevor one of our good friends is that if you if your if your relationship makes rational sense on paper right mm -hmm. if it makes sense on paper in terms of what you want to do and who you're looking for when the moments that your emotions fade See how they said on paper? Ooh, I have a TikTok to show you after this from H3H3. Some people don't like this. Some people don't like the resume. They don't like the checklist. I think a checklist that is about values and focus is kind of key. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with a checklist when you're dating. I had a checklist. My partner had a checklist. Like they had checklists. I don't have a problem with checklist. I have a problem with you not knowing why you have the checklist. If you made a checklist up because you thought that's what you were supposed to do, then you're still not dating for you. I like a checklist. I like a checklist when I'm dating. I like going through it and be like, nope, you don't qualify because here's the red flag. Again, when you're talking about when you're getting to know yourself and you're learning tools, the difference between temptation and an opportunity is the same thing in dating. Is this a temptation or is this my partner? Is this a temptation? Is this a life lesson or is this the person I'm going to build a life with? Is this the person I'm going to be successful with? And that I think it really does coincide with that relationship you're having with knowing yourself and checklists help you know yourself because you're the one writing the list. Need because that does happen at times in season, life gets hard, etc. You have your rational reasons for staying together. When the entire relationship is founded on emotions, then when the emotions fade and wane, which all emotions do in time, they wax and they wane, then what are you left with? Not a lot. And that's why I think so many people break up. Right. And so that rational foundation, that foundation of respect and loyalty and shared mission and shared values is the bedrock upon which we build the emotional side of the relationship, which comes and goes like any relationship. You know what I mean? Like there's waxing and waning. And I would say that what has happened is if you have the ups and downs, the midline of the ups and downs continues to rise over time as we get better at relationshiping with one another. Yeah. And something I just wanted to say to like, I saw a lot of comments on, you know, the post that I made and, and you kind of mentioned it as like, you know, the, the difference in the women that you dated. But I think that a lot of men think like, oh, well, you know, in this relationship, like what if I want a woman who like cooks and cleans and like does all, I do all of that. So like, obviously I pay people to do some of the stuff, but like make lunch, like something I've never stopped doing is like, I make Alex's lunch every day. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm never going to stop doing that. Cause like, I like feeling feminine, mm -hmm. not at work, but in home. And so like, I've learned to. Is cooking for your partner feminine? Because Gordon Ramsay be a bitch then. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But okay. That's like an interesting idea. Oh my gosh. The screen black flickering every time I click is like making me really like, what is that? Why is that happening? Okay. So is cooking for your partner feminine? Like is being, you know what I mean? Isn't it interesting how we associate like, cook, like making lunch for my partner is so nice. It's like, it makes me feel feminine. I don't think of it being very, I don't feel feminine at all when I cook for my partners or for people in my life. I just don't feel feminine. Like I just don't even associate that with femininity. So I'm not sure what that means, but I can see why some people would associate that with femininity. See how we use words so differently based off our bubbles. You know what I mean? It's so interesting. You know what I mean? It's just so interesting to do both. It's like, I like to have that balance of that masculine feminine energy. I maintain that. And I think that that's something that we've done really well with, but I think it's a, it's a common misconception is like, okay, well, if I'm this career oriented, ambitious women, I'm not going to want to do anything nice for my man. I'm like, no, that's not at all. Like I'm still going to put his way as laundry. I'm going to bring him water, bring him snacks, make him food, cook for him, like do nice things. For I mean, him. I just do that if shit needs to get put away. Like, again, it's not about like, oh, I'm the woman, I'm the man, I'm feminine, I'm masculine. I just feel so genderless. Like, I don't even think about it as related to my gender at all. And I don't know, like, it's so interesting. Isn't that fascinating? I don't, I don't think it was always that way. I mean, maybe, no, I it couldn't have been because I, I grew up in such a binary bubble. It was always like in contrary to being a woman, I guess. Or like, it's just like, get stuff done. I don't have time to decide who does what because of gender. Just get it effing done. Um, you know because that's what I want in my marriage. And just because, you know, you work with somebody, what you see when they're- Oh yeah, good point, Discord. It's not feminine if you grill lunch for your partner.
working together is not always what's going on behind closed doors. Yeah, we have a, like, honestly, we have a wildly different personal relationship than we do kind of public relationship. Like it's much more, it's much more like cutesy and like whimsical and fun and- Good, I believe that, that's good. Light. I mean, and, and for me, like I have to, I have to ratchet down my aggression levels like a lot when I, like and I had to learn that because like I can be very harsh and very cold and very cutting. And so I had to like learn how to just like tone it way down. And then kind of like, I had to learn how to just be nicer and be kinder. And it's, and it's, it's, it's done wonders for me, I think also. Like my personal life with Layla has helped me be a better leader in the business. Yeah, I think my farm brother really um, relates to this category of person maybe. Because same thing, his wife, his kids, like he was always like very like lovable as a kid and people loved him. But there is like, it has softened him through the years, which I think is important. Not that he doesn't come off like kind of goofy in some ways, but like, because this guy also reminds me of him. Like they're kind of soft, but kind of not soft. I think I understand what he's saying. It's like, sometimes people come into your life to give you a new tool. And it sounds like Layla really did that for him. Business because it used to be all fire and brimstone and it's taken a decade, you know what I mean, of managing people and, and working to not have to be that way. And I, that's me reeling in um, and, and kind of finding more balance. Yeah, and I think on the on the other side of that, working with Alex has helped me find more fire and brimstone. And so <laughs> if you look at like the evolution of us and you watch like old videos or interviews and things like that, I think you could probably see how we were more of those and we've now learned from each other. And I think that's something. G says they both ain't alphas. Well, first of all, alpha is a construct. I think they're both dominant. And I think they're both go-getters. And I think they're both uh, type type A personalities probably or related. They're both aggressive. They're both the top of their game. They're both uh, to be contended with. So regardless if you call them an alpha or not, they are in some bubbles considered an alpha, right? They are just dominant. And I think that's important is to know if you're a dominant personality or not. And this is really what it's about. Even alpha and beta, it's like a made up concept. It's not even real. Like there's nothing about it that's real. It's just like we decided this is what this word means, which is why it changes over time. But that's basically what they mean is like, are you dominant or passive? Are you more dominant or more passive? Are you more chill? Or are you more passive? Are you a pushover? Like all these things are different kinds of words to mean different kinds of things. But I would argue that these people are both very dominant that I like is that I can learn from Alex and he inspires me in so many ways. I've just never had that before. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I was thinking about, this. so it's like on, on one side, I think we represent different decision poles and we are more comfortable in being more polar because the other person exists to balance us. But when it comes to interpersonal like traits and whatnot, uh, I think that people grow, you know, like we've grown, we've grown closer together in that and in, in, in being more similar in that way, which I think is actually kind of nice for business because then we became, we become more unified and people can, kind of deal with us similarly. But yeah. Yeah. So I think that was it. Any other trigger worthy stuff that we had in our comments? Anything we can no, piss anyone I mean, else I'm sure off sure now for? people are gonna say, oh that's codependency because you know if you guys each have these, you know, conflicting traits, you're not one whole person. And I'm like, I just don't I actually don't believe that at all. I think when we both met we were completely whole people and it's just that, you know, like when you bring on you say you're running a team and you know you're doing everything in the beginning and then you bring on someone who they're amazing at sales. Am I gonna keep doing sales just because that'll make me a more like well-versed leader, no, I'm going to let that person do sales because that's all they do and they're better at it. And so I think it's also the same with, you know, if you want to build something together, you know, there it's okay to rely on each other for certain things. And I think that like a lot of stuff nowadays with like the word codependency and all that going out there, I think it's kind of foo-foo bullshit because like, yes, you don't want to rely on someone to the point that like if they- Okay, like codependency is a real phenomenon. Uh, but like it means something. It really does mean something, right? To be codependent. I don't think I would describe this relationship as codependent in any capacity. Feels really strange to even think this could be codependent. You're saying for you, you're incapable of doing it themselves. But if you choose to let them decide, if you choose to let them do something, I think that that's really helpful. I mean, in we're codependent on other humans to live. So like, you know what I mean? Like who makes your food? Who's the one who's doing the farming and hunting for us so that we can, like, you know what I mean? Understanding the point of delegating, you know, different different decision silos is part of having a relationship where you can both accomplish more. Like if we both are doing all the same things and one of us isn't required. So usually in codependent relationships, in the way that I would use it in the mental health bubble, that would mean you're getting less done because the codependency is keeping you crippled and you're actually being less of a whole person. Uh, but that's why there's a difference. Codependent relationships, in my mind, 
again, a construct we've created to identify a certain type of relationship, right, is like one where you aren't excelling, where you actually are self-sabotaging and you're having constant issues, right? Uh, Yes, Miss Fishy, they're interdependent, not codependent, right? You're interdependent, not codependent. So interdependent, good, codependent, bad. And so we can just double the ground that we can cover if we delineate roles, which we do inside the marriage as well as we do inside the business. And they're different, you know, within each of those dynamics, it's just what are the things you're responsible for? What are the things I'm responsible for? You know, and we, and we roll accordingly. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just wanted a woman that like, if I hit her, she would hit me back. And that was, uh, fuck. (laughs) Seems like a really good place to, uh, to stop. To end this video. video. Domestic violence. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So there we go. We were looking for an example of an alpha married to an alpha. I would just say a dominant married to a dominant. You know, I would say uh, an aggressive personality married to an aggressive personality. I would say, um, you know, like at the end of the day, not everyone wants their opposite and everybody needs that. Some people like it. Like, again, my partner is much more chill than I am. I'm much more dominant than he is. But my partner is incredibly capable and confident and not a pushover. And I would never feel like I could seamroll him. I feel like he'd really stand up for himself, which I really rely on. I do rely on somebody who can stand up for themselves, not because he <laughs> needs to stand up to me. But in case I'm ever wrong, I need to trust him to be like, hey, I actually think this is wrong. And I'm like, oh, shit, what did I do wrong? And then I have to trust him to be capable in assessing if something is wrong. So it's not that we need to be perfect 24-7 or any of those things. Is that we need to have the trust in one another to be capable. So ultimately, we want capable partners. And that level of capability is based off of your own needs, right? So great video. I'm glad we watched it. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.